this is the third in a series of four lessons about the apostrophe in English. In this case, we will look at some aspects of apostrophe use that many native speakers of English get wrong or are unsure about. The first problem is the correct choice of the little word its. Should it be its with an apostrophe or its without an apostrophe? This may be the most misspelled word in the English language. Certainly, it's the most common misspelled word I see in the comments sections of the Guardian newspaper. The first mistake is omitting the apostrophe when the word is a contraction of it is or it has. The it's in it's been snowing is a contraction of it has been snowing. So it's needs an apostrophe. The second mistake, which is much more common, is including an apostrophe in the possessive pronoun its. The its in the sentence, the tree has lost its leaves, is not a contraction and does not need an apostrophe. The its in this case is a possessive pronoun similar to the possessive pronouns his or our in his lost his keys and we've lost our way. OK, this table has sentences exemplifying the difference between the contraction it's on the left, which needs an apostrophe, and the possessive pronoun it's on the right, which doesn't. A good way to decide if you need the apostrophe or not in any given sentence is to see whether the sentence makes sense if the word it's is expanded. Clearly neither the tree has lost it is leaves nor the tree has lost it has leaves is possible. So the version without the apostrophe is correct. Quiz page. Pause the video if you want to review the questions and answers before continuing. OK, let's change topics. In the first lesson in this series about apostrophes, we looked at possessive nouns, as in these examples. The apostrophe is used to show possession. But when we know which possessor is being talked about, we can use a pronoun. For example, her, her toy, instead of Sally's toy. Among the other possessive pronouns are his, our, and their. No problem, and no apostrophes here. But we can also use these pronouns standing alone without their following nouns, as in these examples. Unfortunately, all the apostrophes here are wrong. Although we denote possession in nouns with an apostrophe, for example, Sally's toy, we don't use the apostrophe in the standalone possessive pronoun. This confuses many people and leads to the mistakes exemplified here. Here are the corrections. No apostrophes in yours, hers, ours, theirs. And of course, no apostrophes in the other possessive pronouns, mine, his, and especially not in its. Right, let's take another look at possessive nouns. So here we have Sally with her toy and the tree with its roots. We add apostrophe plus s to the possessive nouns to make Sally's toy and the tree's roots. And here we have James with his cat and Paris with its buildings. Both James and Paris end with an S. So how do we write them to show the possession of the cat and the buildings? In fact, there are two possibilities as shown here. Add an apostrophe plus S or just add an apostrophe. There's no agreement on which variant to use, but there seems to be a trend to spill these possessives as they are pronounced. So your best bet is to end these possessives with an apostrophe plus s. In this way, they read as they are pronounced. James's cat, Paris's buildings, and two more, the bus's wheels, a crocus's petals. But the rules on this issue are a little more complicated than that, unfortunately. Here are two examples of words ending in s. One singular, the other plural where no apostrophe, or just the apostrophe, are commonly seen. 
So if you really want to get things right, you should consult your organization's star guide or look in an authoritative star guide such as the Chicago Manual of Style. Alternatively, you may be able to avoid the issue altogether by rewriting the possessive noun to use the preposition of. This doesn't always work, however. The cat of James sounds very questionable. Now let's turn to the next apostrophe issue where there is doubt about the presence and placement of the apostrophe. Coordinate possessives. A coordinate possessive is two nouns or pronouns most commonly joined by the word and. For example, Jane and Dave and Laurel and Hardy. We consider Jane and Dave and Laurel and Hardy as single units. In this case, Jane and Dave are joint parents and Laurel and Hardy are film collaborators. Single units have a single apostrophe plus S as in the possessive phrases here. Now here are James and Mary with their pets. They are not a single unit and obviously not parents as Jane and Dave are. So when we put them together in a possessive we need apostrophes for both names, James's and Mary's pets. The same applies to the different films of two different directors, Kubrick and Spielberg. Kubrick's and Spielberg's films. A similar principle applies here. In this example, Jenny and Mia's friends, it will most likely be understood that these are their shared friends. In this second example, Jenny's and Mia's friends, it will probably be understood that these are different friends. If you want to make this clear, you could just repeat the word friends. For example, Jenny's friends and Mia's friends are coming to the party. Quiz page. Pause the video if you want to review the questions and answers before continuing. For the next problematic apostrophe issue, let's imagine that a new Scottish school is choosing a name for itself. Which of these alternatives is correct, with or without the apostrophe? It's clear that an apostrophe is needed to denote grammatical possession in phrases embedded in sentences such as the girl's toilets are open. But when the phrase is a title or a sign, then the matter is less clear. There is no definitive answer here, but there seems to be a clear trend towards omitting the apostrophe in names, titles and signs, especially when the relationship is not one of possession. The Cambridge Guide to English Usage lists the examples you see on this page where the apostrophe is left out. Right, let's wrap up by looking at the thorny problem of how to apostrophize abbreviations, letters and numbers. For a start, how would you write the common admonition, mind your P's and Q's? In other words, remember your manners. Well, the answer is that there is no agreement except that the last one is wrong. The Cambridge Dictionary's variation is the least logical because we don't use the apostrophe to show regular plurals. However, it is a variation that seems to be the most common. There is similar disagreement over the insertion of the apostrophe in the other abbreviations, letters and numbers. Here are a few examples. Once again, the trend seems to be towards simplification, which means that the non-apostrophe variant is gaining ascendancy. However, there is one context in which the apostrophe should be retained in the pluralization of lowercase letters, namely when omission of the apostrophe results in an unintended word, as in the three apostrophe-less examples on the right. In summary of this section about apostrophes in abbreviations, letters and numbers, I will remind you of the advice I gave earlier, namely if you are unsure whether or not you need an apostrophe, you should consult your organisation's style guide or look in a style guide such as the Chicago Manual of Style. Quiz page. Pause the video if you want to review the questions and answers before continuing. 
OK, you've come to the end of this lesson on apostrophes for experts. Here is a summary of what I hope you will have got out of it. In the description below this video, you will find a link to the lesson index page shown on the left. As you can see, there are four ways to access the content, as well as a glossary and links to quizzes and more information on the topic.